me get this door right here because it makes oh, it a little sure. easier for people to jump in. Okay, guys. Thank you. Yeah, of course. You guys ever shoot before? So it's just about like a two minute drive down. Uh, I, have, I have 19 nieces and nephews now, so like all my sisters, they have a, uh, a bunch of kids and stuff. So then you guys did black powder on Tuesday, right? No, so I did it when I came here a year ago. Oh. We did the 40 Um, all right, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you've had a good afternoon. If not, we are going to change that, okay? We're gonna have some fun and shoot some pretty interesting guns today. So, first off, I wanna go ahead and say that uh, black powder is a very time-consuming activity. It takes a lot of steps, and it's a very, uh, just time-consuming activity because of all the stuff and the steps we're gonna be doing today. So, I'm gonna go ahead and be very clear with everything once it comes to the actual loading process. Right now, at the very beginning, I'm gonna just go ahead and give you some context of what you're actually gonna do today. So, I'm gonna go over just the gun you're gonna get to shoot today. That way, you have a little bit of context. You know, if you leave, somebody asks you, hey, what gun did you shoot you're gonna be like scratching your head like um i think i shot a rifle no i don't want you to do i want you to be able to have a conversation about it so that's why i'm going to give you a little bit of context just very nice and subtle just a little bit of history that way you know what gun you did or what gun you shot today and it's a little bit more significant to you um, and then after that when it comes to the loading process and the safety portion of my speech it, that is required listening to okay if i see you on your phone over here or like looking over here start wandering around i'm not going to let you shoot today simple as that we're working with firearms I need everyone to be on the same page when it comes to the safety right now when I'm going over my history and stuff quite frankly I don't really mind if you like are recording me or if you're if you're like you know just like looking around and stuff and a replica from the original the original was invented in 1815 this right here is a Hawken black powder rifle okay so this was invented in 1815 at least the uh, actual concept of it it was uh, originated in 1815 by two brothers in st. Louis Missouri Jacob and Samuel Hawken they actually just wanted to just recreate the way that black powder was used because anything before this gun was still technically black powder, but you had to, you know, so you loaded it the same way, but the way that it worked was the difference between a rifle and like a musket. If you don't know the difference, I'll go over the difference. A smooth barrel musket, for example, is just a straight tube inside. There's no pattern cut out. So that way it doesn't just spin anything. It's just a big blast going out. So with muskets, very, very inaccurate. If you don't know what a rifle is, it's all in the word it's in the rifling of the barrel so what rifling it does to the projectile it kind of just gives it a spiral rotation causing that projectile to spin really really fast at an accelerated rate making it more of a accurate shot more of a straight true shot but back in the 1800s they didn't really know about this they weren't really experimenting with it they didn't really know the difference between you know getting a nice straight shot and just kind of having a point your gun about two feet higher because with that like before this gun you have to aim your gun about like two three feet higher than your target and when you shoot it you'd have to kind of just wait for it to just kind of pivot down into your target just the actual loading process so today we went over the gun and how it was made these two brothers they sat down they perfected everything um today after about three or four shots it's still the same way back in the 1800s after about three or four shots you physically cannot ram down another ball through the top just because of how much solder and how much gunk built up in here everything's exposed the powder that we're pouring in here is going to be burnt and there's going to be a lot of unburnt powder in the barrel after the round has exited already so what that means is it creates a lot of gunk after about three or four shots we can't really stuff another one down there so we have modern day solvents here that will allow us to continue the shoot for everyone to have fun but back in the 1800s you actually have to after about three or four shots you actually have to go hide in a cave for about 45 minutes to an hour, I'm not lying to you, punch out every single pin out of your rifle and then re-lubricate your barrel, clean it back, put it back together. The whole process would take you almost two hours just so that you can go shoot another three or four shots. Very inconvenient. Back in the uh, 1800s, they were more commonly used in a 54 caliber or even a 70 caliber solid lead ball. So 70 is about about this size literally a big old marble today you're not going to be shooting something that big it's still impressive and i'd still say you could go back home and brag to all your buddies you like, i shot a 50 cal you know i shot a 50 cal and i'll show you right here it's pretty interesting to see the the big the big round you're going to get to shoot today if i can open them yep right here so 
this is a 50 cal so i let a ball right here so when shot on impact this thing sometimes could depending on how much powder's behind it you could actually if you hit a plate this thing will fragment about the size of my hand the thinness of a aluminum foil and shrapnel will go everywhere around that so back in the 1800s they nicknamed this the pedal of death and a lot of people don't like to say it historians don't like to say it but this right here is one of the leading causes of death not the ball itself but the reason what happened after so if, when shot on impact with this if you shot like let's say your bone or something it would fragment back in the 1800s they didn't have x-ray didn't have all these different technologies that we know now so back in the 1800s specifically in the civil war the second leading cause of death in the civil war was due to amputations because when shot with something like this the the, the doctor wouldn't necessarily want to basically like you know dig around there and try to find all these different pieces he would just say okay you shot on the lower arm cut the nearest joint and they cut the nearest joint sometimes they'd miss lead on the upper arm and then you'd die from lead poisoning in the next couple weeks or so so guys when it comes to firearms safety is my number one priority okay so right here we got both our rifles I'm gonna give you all specific uh, detailed instructions on how we're gonna do this right now. So um, the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna have a one person on the left side, one person on the right side. I am gonna be running two guns at once and then two people at once. And then my guide, myself, I'll be helping you guys out. So today, the way it's gonna work is we're gonna have our station here. And it'll be nice because once I'm done showing you my little demonstration here, um, you guys could do it from that side and you're already closer because usually people do it from that inside part right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab all the tools I need. If you don't mind just keeping your eyes and ears up here, that way as we go, I can show you the tools and how they work. And then that way you guys more or less know what you're doing. And I'll be here by your side making sure that nothing goes wrong when you're doing it, okay? So um, nothing to worry about. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and start showing you the tools, but just give me one second. We're gonna start go ahead and showing you all the little cool trinkets you're gonna use today. So specifically today, I want you to feel ensured that you're doing everything super, super minimalistic and as safe as you can here today. Back in the 1800s, they were using these right here. This is a replica from the 1800s. Uh, sorry, 1800s. It's a, a replica from the, uh, from the Civil War to be specific. Um, right here, this is called a powder horn. They would have one of these on their crook of their belt right here, just knocked on their crook. And to set this round off down range for you to actually have fun today. If it was any less or any more, it wouldn't be fun, okay? Because if it was any less, the gun wouldn't go off. It wouldn't fire. It maybe it fired, the bullet would go like this, dropped it straight down to the floor. It's literally barely enough for you guys to have fun. If it was a lot more than this, you would not have fun because the gun would just rattle your teeth and stuff. That's kind of like more like what you see in the movies, like Leonardo DiCaprio or like The Revenant where it flies into like four or six feet back when he shoots a big old musket. That's not historically accurate, okay? So I want you to know you're very safe here today with the amount of powder you're using today is super, super nice and easy, okay? Not, not a big kick in your shoulder, just enough for where you're like, oh, that feels good. Because I'd say if you've done 22s or something smaller than this, it's about twice as much as a 22 about recoil rise, uh, wise, okay? Because these guns are built so well. Let's go ahead and show you how everything is packed today. So I'm gonna go through the tools right now as we go. These passes right here. So first step, okay? I'm gonna show you all how to hold the rifle when you're loading it. This is the only way I wanna see you standing when you're loading your rifle. If you're left-handed, hold it on your right side. If you're right-handed, hold it on your left side. So right here, I want to say that this gun does not have a cap on there, so it can go off I mean, while you're loading or anything like that. That's an important thing too, so I want to just clearly state that there's no cap on there. You're going to go ahead and set it down on your boot. These are still very old replicas. This is one right here from 1960, 1970, so still pretty old. Please don't scuff our rifles on the ground. Set it down on your boot just like that. If your foot hurts for some reason, then I can put my boot out for you, okay? Just don't scuff the rifles, okay? So set it down on your boot with the barrel pointed away from your face just like this at an angle. This should be common gun knowledge for everybody, but if you haven't been told this, I'm gonna tell you now. Don't ever look down the end of any barrel, gun, weapon, rifle, anything like that, okay? It's just dumb. Sometimes we get people where they've never done this before and they're I wonder what's down there and they start looking. No, absolutely not. It's not that you're in danger. It's it makes me feel very anxious and it should make you feel some sort of way, okay? So if you've never been told this, you're being told now today, don't ever look down any barrel, any gun, rifle, anything like that, okay? So just keep it pointed away from your face. That way I feel better and that way you feel better. And this, you can leave everything. You can do it from the side right here. You don't have to look down me while you're doing it, okay? So first step is the most important because if you want your gun to go boom 
you need powder. So take one second to ensure that there is powder in the casing that you're picking up. So there's powder, take one second. You're gonna go ahead and pour it directly down the end of that barrel, okay? Straight down, hold on to your casing. You see it's the same diameter as a barrel? It'll fall straight down. Please don't let that happen. Just hold on tight to it. When you set it down, I like to literally just chuck it because that's showing me when I come back that it doesn't have any powder in there. Or if you wanna be a little bit more polite you could set it down upside down just don't put it back the way you found it it's just no way because the shadow it really gets you sometimes okay it gets me a lot nicer it's a lot lighter grab this one it has two ends okay a dirty end and a side that's shiny with a hole don't use the end with the hole that's for attachments something gets stuck we're gonna have to put an attachment on there and pull it out so hopefully this is the side we're not gonna use today okay the flat dirty side that's already been used that's what you're gonna drop straight down into the barrel you're gonna just go ahead and just drop it straight down you can literally just drop it or you can set it down nicely I don't care but then after that give it a couple taps pull it out just like that set it down now the next step is also important you're gonna reach in here in this little tin case and grab one patch okay you see I grabbed two but just catch yourself because you don't want to make a bad mistake. If you get two patches, again, it'll get stuck and it's going to delay the shoot. Focus on one patch, rub it in between your fingers, ensure it's just one, grab that patch, set it over the end of your barrel. I like to utilize my left hand to hold the barrel and the patch at the same time, leaving my right hand mobile for everything else, okay? Now you're going to come on over here, have a 50 cal right here, one ball, set it down in the middle of that patch. Now, these patches, they're a little thick sometimes, so it could be a little difficult to place them correctly. Don't really worry about it being super centered. The biggest thing is, I'm gonna give you this reference right now. I don't wanna point the barrel towards you guys so you guys can see, but I'm gonna give you a reference. So when you're looking at a flower, you see the, these short starters right here, there's two ends to them too. There's a little nub on the wood right there, if you guys can tell, and then there's the rod section. You're always gonna start with the nub first. It's just preference, doesn't matter which one you pick. You're gonna put that nub on the ball right there. I like to hold everything on my left hand. Look, the ball, the patch, and this right here. And now, sometimes you can push it down with your power, you know, if you have the muscles, but honestly, you're on vacation. I like to do things as simple and nice and easy. I have really delicate hands, so I like to be nice and gentle, you know? So I brought you guys a mallet right here, okay? So just like a hammer and a chisel, pretend that this is your chisel, this is your hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and just thunk it down to where the wood touches the metal, turn it around, rod section. Again, same thing, hammer and a chisel. You're gonna go ahead and just thunk it down all the way. You're gonna pop that out. Come back to your ramrod right here. Again, dirty side, not the end with the hole. Drop the dirty side down there till it kind of stops. You're like, hey, what the heck, what do I do? So if you put some force into it, it starts pushing down. So please do not grab it from the top because these could snap. Right now we're in a worldwide ammunition shortage. So I'm gonna have a talk to you about what all the stuff we have, it's a luxury. Some people can't find it. We find what we find and we make it work, okay? So please don't grab it up here, grab it down here, okay, about halfway. And just like you're turning butter, okay? Everybody turns butter at home, right? So just like that, it goes down all the way. If you wanna verify if it's done, you can just go like that. And I'm gonna show you an example of when it sounds like when it's done. You hear that hollow thunk, kind of like a big thunk? It doesn't go down any, it doesn't sound hollow anymore, or it doesn't sound like it goes any further. That's how you know you're done. You're gonna pop your ramrod straight out of there. And then now, the only way I wanna see you guys walk around with this gun today, up into the booths, is with the rifle, the barrel, pointed past your face line, straight up into the air, okay? I know at most ranges, they tell you to point it down, but you just took the time to pack your work of art all the way down here. I doubt you wanna blend it up and you know mix it up and cause you know like risk and stuff, because if you start tilting it over, all the stuff you just packed is gonna start moving around and start blending up, and if it's not packed down good, it's not gonna go off. So that's what I mean. You wanna keep it nice and still, but you wanna point it in the right direction so other people don't get anxious. So keep it pointed directly up into the air, kind of like a Confederate soldier, I'm playing. You could just hold it like this or whatever. Just hold it past your face line. You're gonna walk up into any one of these booths. I like to shoot from these two booths over here on the right. It makes it a little bit easier to get a whole field perspective of the entire range. You get the targets on the left, the targets on the right. And if you shoot from these two right here, you only get what's in front of you. You don't get everything to the left or to the right. So I like those two over here on the far right, up to you guys. But whenever you step in there, we're gonna go ahead and step in. I'm gonna show you how to hold it. I'm gonna show you how to use the triggers, how the sights work. Once you're ready, once you're comfortable, I'll put a cap on there. 
then you'll fire your shot. And hopefully, if everything goes well, you'll hear a big old explosion, the cap goes off, a bunch of smoke comes out of the end of the barrel, you'll hopefully hear one of those targets clink, or you'll see some dirt if you miss. But the point is that you're gonna see a reaction, okay? Once you pull that trigger, something's gonna go boom, something's gonna happen in the background. Now, in black, but it's gonna sound like a cap gun, okay? What this is happening, and I want you to pay attention to the reaction of the gun, what's happening around it, and the noise itself, okay? It's very important that you pay attention. If this had a fully a full charge in there, the gun would kick back too. It probably wouldn't stay in my hands. It'd just fly out of my hands. And then the, this little percussion cap is what I'm talking about. You place it on there. Now, when you pull that, you heard that? No smoke. The gun didn't kick back. There's nothing that noticed in the background. Did you guys notice anything? No. So when you're loading your powder into your barrel, take one second that there's powder in the casing pour that powder directly down that barrel you're gonna go ahead and grab the dirty side you're gonna go ahead and pack it straight down you're gonna go ahead and take that out you're gonna go ahead and grab one singular patch grab that patch grab your ball grab your little tool grab your chisel your mallet right here you're gonna go ahead and down all the way go ahead and grab your ramrod right here same thing, down low, not up top, down low. You're gonna go ahead, just like you're turning butter, grab the other side, go ahead all the way down, double check it, went down a little bit more, pop that out, and now we are done. If you ever forget or just feel like you missed a step, as long as you did one of something, you're gonna be fine, okay? If you ever question or doubt yourself, ask me, okay? I'll be right here kind of watching you. Usually I'll catch your mistake before you end up doing it, okay? I'm just here as a technical supervisor to make sure you don't build a pipe bomb and to make sure that every, everyone's safe here today, okay? So the shreds, don't do it, okay? It's not funny because sometimes in setting that charge off downrange, I will be the only ones touching these, okay? You don't have to ever worry about anybody getting their hands on those. So before we get started here today, let's clear out the safety and get every spot like nice and uh, ready. That way you guys, when you're coming back from your shot right now, you could reload it yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get two more powders ready right here. For the safety, my number one rule, even if you cannot fire this gun without a cap, please practice good safety habits and don't have your finger on the trigger unless you're wanting to fire, okay? So my number one rule for any of the shoots we do out here, finger off that trigger till you're absolutely sure you want to pull it to shoot those targets, okay? So just make sure you keep it on the side. I will go ahead and demonstrate right here, just on the side. You see that? This is your index finger. This is your trigger finger. Today, this gun does not have a safety, so you are your safety. Your finger is your safety. Make sure you are aware of where it's being placed. And if you don't know, then just look before you try just pulling something, you know what I mean? So be very clear with that. Um, like I said, always, Your uh, 20, 20, 25 vision over here. You I should, know, right? You should be able to hit anything, huh? I 
can hit a cactus tree. So, is that like surgery for your eyes or no? Or do you just have natural perfect vision? I just have natural vision. Yeah. I'm not sure. Dad, do you have good eyes? Yeah, I have 20-20. There, it runs in the family then. And I think mom... Alright, Dad, I'm going to kill the bear. First ones are just practice shots. Yeah, that bear is scary to have. No, I'm sorry. I know it's very frustrating for you guys. To I think it's kind of fun. I'm sorry. Because you never know if it's actually going to shoot. Right above it. Ah! Let me show it. Can you shoot it again? Probably blow up on me. I'm going to try to shoot it again. Yeah, that's it. Go, bud. Are you on the same point you're shooting? Okay. Uh, hawk and what? Hawk and black powder. Okay. I'm gonna shoot a hawk and black powder rifle. There you go. Yes, sir. So, hey. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Perfect. Yeah, that's perfect, man. You got it. That's yeah. right. You just pour it straight down the hole. Yep. Just like that, buddy. There you go, man. Yeah, no need to be scared. You got this. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. You're good. And then just set it down. Yeah, like that. Perfect. Grab okay. your uh, ramrod, one of these with the long sticks. This? No, the longer one to the right. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Perfect, yeah, you got it. And then just drop that in right there, yep. Mm -hmm. Down the hole. Is that it? Wait. Yeah, sorry. you can just do it like that, yeah, and then. Do I do that? No, oh, that's not the handle. So then you pull this back out. Take your time, yeah, nice and slow. There's no rush. Yep. And then after that, you'll grab one patch. There you go. And you're going to hold that with your other hand, too. So move your hand further up. That way you could use your thumb to hold the patch, too. You see that? Like that. That way you use your other hand to grab a ball. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Set it down right there. Use your other hand. Don't be afraid. You got to put a little effort into it. Okay, buddy? Push it down. Yeah, it's not going to stay by itself. It's So use this hand, the one the, to hold it down. Just like that. Now your other hand will come over here for the for the next step. Yep. You can't expect it to stay in place by itself. And then I just smash it. So remember, you're gonna go ahead and hold it down. Now with this hand, hold oh, everything fine. together. It's fine. Don't worry. It'll still work. So this hand, buddy. Go ahead. You gotta put in a little effort. I'm trying to help you here. With this hand, you're gonna hold everything together. And with this hand, you're gonna grab a mallet. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. There you go. It's all right. Take your time. You, that's how you learn. You gotta learn from your mistakes. There you go. Mm -hmm. And then okay. flip it around. Yeah, keep it in your hand if you want. You could just flip this around. Watch, I'll give you a hand there. And then try like that. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Use that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. You're strong, boy. Just like that. And then pop it out. You can set both of those down. And then you'll go back to your big long uh, rod over here. Yep. Yep, correct. That is perfect. Yes, sir. Just like that, okay? And then remember, halfway, okay? Right there. Give it a good hit. There you go. Yeah, is it gone? You can kind of feel it. Yep, perfect. Nice, man. You got it. There you go, man. You got this. And then right there, if you want, you could end up using that. Yep. That way you don't have to hurt your hands. Nice, dude. There you go. You, you did it. It's perfect, man. That was really good. All right, and then set that rod down, and we'll keep the rifle pointed straight up into the air. And I'll be right behind you if you want to go ahead and make your way to those booths over there. Yeah. yeah, okay. So thank you for doing the work for me. Now I'm going to show you how to hold it. Then I'll show you how it works. Then I'll let you shoot it, okay? So just right there. It's perfect. What was your name, man? Lucas. Lucas. That's a cool name. So Lucas, right here, are you right-handed? Mm -hmm. So you right hand. See right here, you're gonna hold an air pistol. Can you do that? Follow along. These three fingers are gonna slide up into the crab right there. You're gonna go ahead and just this finger right here to the side, that's your trigger finger, and then close your hand around that. Now your left hand's gonna come up here, but notice how I don't just wrap around because then you'll cover your sights, okay? Wrap it like this, okay? See that? Now, it's a pretty heavy gun, so you can bring your elbow into this spot right here, and that way it can hold the, the weight of the gun on this pad instead of having to hold it all the way up. It's a heavy gun, okay? So this is the basic stance, but you can decide to use this block however you need to. We could even, if you wanted to, we could even 
grab two of those and you could just put it like this. You could just go like this. Oh, okay. If you want to. What do you prefer? I'll try the other one. You, you, see, you seem like a strong boy, so I think that's that's the best way to do it. But if it's too heavy, go ahead and step in here with me. I will step by step right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll step out of the booth, give you some more space, okay? Just like that, buddy. Yep. All right, that looks good. Okay, now this stock right here into your shoulder, right there in that spot. No, right, let me show you. So I'll go back. Spread them out. They're in the right spot, but yeah, yeah spread them out. Perfect. Okay, the next step here, Lucas is to yep. so right there you had it right the first time just like that yeah uh, that's perfect yeah it feels good right and then i would use this to pull the correct yes but before we get there we're focusing on your sights first remember how i told you not to wrap your hand around oh, like yeah. that just because you won't be able to see where your shot's going okay so right there i like how you're standing everything's perfect you're doing really great just take your time nice deep breaths you're gonna look down this section right here it's called your barrel you're gonna look down your barrel right here is your front sight any type of shooting you're ever doing you always go from front sight to rear sight so you look down this section first and you find your first your front sight once you find the uh, the front side right there, you see that little dot, the ball at the top? Mm -hmm. That's your front side. You're gonna line it up back here with the little notch. You see that? Right in the center. Do you, uh, do you play any like uh, video games with guns and stuff sometimes or no? No. No, do you, uh, have you shot a BB gun before? No. No? Okay, so I was just saying, just because if you've done those other things, this will be, so you're gonna close your left eye. You look down this right here with your dominant eye. So you're gonna use your right eye. And you're gonna look down the section right here. You see how right here at the top it's nice and flat? You see that? The little dot thing. So yeah, the dot, you see how it's flat yeah, uh -huh. on top? That flat section has to be flat with these two. Okay. You see that? But right in the center. So everything should be even. And then once you do that, you're going to put these both lined up to any of those red targets. You could even start very close. You could shoot these right in front of you if you want. See these red ones? Uh, okay. If it, just to kind of figure it out, you Wait, know. Wait, what has to line up both of the dot and the close thing? Correct. Yeah. At the top. Mm-hmm. So you line up this first with the back. Then you, once you figure that out, you're gonna put them both to one of those targets over there. All right. Okay. So it looks like you know what you're doing. We kind of figured it out together. But you see this right here? That's gonna affect you. You want to make sure it's nice and snug like that. Okay, because it's gonna hit you. If it's not like positioned correctly, I don't want you to get spooked, okay? So okay. that's the best way to hold it, okay? Now do me a favor, Lucas, with this finger, pull this back. Pull this trigger down here. You're gonna just pull it all the way. Yep. Just all to get the a, way? Yeah. The just cap to get is a, not on. Right? There's no cap. You're just practicing. I just want you to get a feel. Uh, okay. Now with your hand, nice and slow, pull this right here. It's called a hammer. Pull the hammer back two clicks, okay? Nice and slow. One, Wait. one, and then two clicks. Perfect, right there. Just because watch, if you pull it back even further, watch, it'll uh, okay. fall. So just nice and slow. Okay, try it again. Perfect, yeah, you got it down. You're a master at this now, man, you're a pro. So we're gonna go ahead and get started now. It's just your first shot. If this feels like it's too much, you at least tried it and you can let me know after this, okay? okay. Um, and if you want me to pack it after this since you tried it once already, just let me know if you want me to do it for you, okay? So right here, we're gonna put our cap on there. It's more about you having fun. So whatever you want to do to have fun, you let me know. I could pack it for you. You could just shoot it however you want, all right? But you are set here, Lucas. So whenever you're ready, you'll pull the trigger that we practice with. Just take your time to aim your gun. Am nice. I supposed to pull only the front trigger? Correct, yeah. So you're gonna take a deep breath in. Is it gonna, as soon as I touch it, it's gonna set off or? No, so sometimes with this right here, it's a very old form of shooting. The first one, you'll pull this and it'll fall and it'll sound just like this, watch. Whoa. No, watch, I got you. It'll just right there, it'll fall like that, right? Then you're gonna have to re-pull it back and try it again, okay? So on the first one, it might not go off. Sometimes it might though. So expect the unexpected, okay? So you're good right here, Lucas. Whenever you're ready, take a deep breath in. Oh, that's gonna be stuck, right? And you're... when you exhale, Try to pull that trigger when you pull the trigger be very gentle with the trigger nice squeeze okay not very sudden don't jerk the gun too much you got this buddy so wait is this the one where when i touch it lightly it'll go no up, or? this is just the regular trigger it's not it's the one that you practice with right now so it feels just like you did right now this time it is going to go off though take your time nice and slow relax deep breath Three, two, wait hold on Oh wait, it's fine. 
Go ahead. Out there. It's, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to go off anyway, so just pull it, buddy. See, right there. Go ahead and redraw now. Nice and slow. Perfect. So this time it should go off. Just nice and slow. Take your time. You're going to do great. I believe in you. Nice shot. See how you hit it, man. Oh, okay. How did that feel? Not bad. Not bad? This is pretty fun, no? Look at that yeah. thing. Look at you hit it right in the middle, man. On your first try, you hit it. That's awesome. Okay, man. that wasn't as loud as I expected. Did you want to try? Yeah, okay. So remember, it's like this. Not loud. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Watch. Let me show you. Go ahead. Take your hand off. Yeah. Very, very good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and come over here. Alrighty, bud. You're good to go. You know how. I go for a Yeah, you know how it works now. The sights. Just take your time. I want to go for that guy, the red guy over there. Yeah, go for it, man. You got this. It's all right. Go ahead and redraw nice and slow. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You got this. Nice shot. That was Shut up. Did you hear that? Oh, it hit. Yeah, that was you, man. Good job. Three, two, one. Go. Just take your time. It's all right. Go ahead and read your now. Take your time. Yep. Perfect. Try again. One, two, three, cheese. All right, final thoughts? Okay. All right, and go. And that, is the, and that is black powder shooting. You're allowed to shoot four times. I only shot twice, uh, but it was not as, it was not as loud and not as bad as I expected. I shot this once, I shot both of mine successfully. Oh, wait. I shot both of mine successfully. There was a lot of safety protocol, so I felt safe. And now we're going to ride the van back to the. And now we're going to ride the van back to the ranch. Careful. Careful, yeah. And then just come peep through one of the holes. Which hole are you at? No. No? This one. This one? Yeah. Come on, it's too dark. <laughs>